Now in order to do this activity at home, you need a bunch of different materials, most of which you should be able to find around your house. Um, so first we're gonna need a big pan to boil things in. We need a half cup of water, one and a half to two cups of sugar, depending on how much you have, an empty jar for us to put our mixture in. We need some string, cut to be about 12 inches or so, a scissors to cut the string, a pencil to put the string on for later, I'll show you what that's about, our metal spoon to stir, some food coloring, uh, a hard candy ring, kind of like a lifesaver, but if you don't have that, then something that you've cleaned at home like a washer or else a keychain might work. And we need some paper towel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my water into my pot. I've already done that. Um, and if you noticed a pot size difference, I did decide that the previous pot was a little too big, so I moved to a smaller pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the stove and make sure you have adult supervision when you do this. And I'm going to allow my water to boil. A few moments later. Now it looks like my water is boiling. So what I'm going to do is step two. I'm going to stir in the sugar slowly, making sure that the sugar I'm stirring in is dissolved before putting in more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little bit of sugar. And then I'm going to take my metal spoon and start slowly stirring so that that sugar dissolves in the water. I'm gonna repeat this until I have a good chunk of my sugar dissolved in the water because what we're trying to do is get as much sugar dissolved in the water as possible. You shouldn't need more than two cups to do so. In fact, a cup and a half should be good for this part of the experiment. One thing I'm finding is that it is a little bit hot with the heat coming up from the stove. So if you need to, definitely wear some safety protection. The one thing to look for to make sure that the sugar is dissolved is if you see it kind of cloudy in there, that means there's still sugar. You have to stir and stir and stir. Now it looks like most of the sugar is dissolved. Now you should add some more sugar in. Moments later. One thing that you might notice is that a bunch of bubbles are created when you have a lot of sugar in there. What you can do is actually turn the heat down a little. I'm gonna pour a little bit more in. My sh uh, solution here, which is the water and sugar mixture, seems almost saturated, which means that no more sugar can be dissolved in the water. As close to that point as possible is good. Like I said, about one and a half cups of sugar to two cups should lead you to that point. As you can see, it's a little, cloudy in this round of dis dissolving. So I'm gonna keep stirring until it's not cloudy anymore and I can see the bottom of the pan pretty clearly. More moments later. So now that I have all my sugar in the water here, I actually only just used about one and a half cups of sugar. What I'm gonna do now is add two to three drops of food coloring to make it a rich color. I'm gonna make mine green. One, two, three. I'm gonna put my glove back on, grab my spoon, and stir that in. Now I need to let the water and sugar mixture cool. So I'm gonna turn off my burner, put my spoon in the sink, and let this cool. An hour later. So I spent some time letting my solution cool, but what I do want to do is get it in the jar. So very carefully what I'm going to do is pour my cooled solution into the jar. And then once you touch the jar and you sense that it's still a little bit warm, it's not quite room temperature, make sure you leave it to cool. It should cool absolutely. Otherwise, the little seed crystals, they're going to melt. And we don't want that to happen. So in order to pour the jar, you might want to get some help with this, especially if you have a you know hard time with the opening and you know you don't want to get a mess all over the place. So I'm just very carefully going to pour this in without letting it go over the top, which it shouldn't happen. If you have any material left in the bottom, that's fine. Just clean it out with some warm water and you should be good. For this next part, we're gonna prep 
our seed crystal for crystallization to happen in our jar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my string is a two to three inches taller than my jar. That's about here. So everything else on here, I need to wrap around a pencil because this pencil is going to hang over the jar. There we go. Just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is tie the other end through my candy. Again, if you don't have a piece of hard candy, you can use something like a washer or that you've cleaned or something like a key ring like I have here. It's worked for me for that. I'm going to put my string through and tie my candy. My next step is to actually moisten the string from here to here and seed it with some sugar crystals. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it in water, just like this. Make sure I get as high on the string as possible. Wet it completely. I'm gonna lay it on my paper towel here. And I'm gonna take something like a spoon or I can pinch it with my fingers and just drop some of the sugar onto the string. We then want this to dry completely because this is what our crystallization is gonna start with when we put it in the bottle. I'll also turn it to the other side and make sure that I have enough seed crystal. This is a very important step. Make sure that your string is completely moistened and then before you put it in the jar and you put in the cooled sugar, that it's completely dry. 20 minutes later. So once you have your solution cooled in the jar, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the string with the seed crystals and your candy at the bottom and you're gonna put it in the jar making sure that that candy kind of goes down. If it needs a little bit help because your solution is a little dense, you can kind of push it down with a spoon. Try not to, deserve it, to disturb it too much. And you should leave it like this for about five days. Go back and check on it every five days and make sure that you leave it in an area where it's not gonna be disturbed and cover it a little bit. This will allow some of the water to evaporate but also it won't let anything in it as well. So have fun observing, record your observations in your notebook. And when you're done with the activity and also maybe in the, within the next five days, you can complete the Google form assessment. Hope you have fun. Day two. Day three. Day four.